Good afternoon, Mr. Frank Raru and Misako of UNESCO Bangkok, and ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honored to be in, invited here to speak on this subject, um, which is uh, rather selective. We have three kinds of documentary heritage that has been uh, outlined as uh, digital, audiovisual, and analog. Now, analog is anything else that is not digital, <laughs> more or less. Um, so uh, I will ignore ASEAN plus three, the three. I will not talk about the three, just ASEAN. Huh? So that is 11 countries in South Asia with different types of documentary heritage. When you talk about strategies, I think maybe um, UNESCO has forgotten that uh, it is a strategy. Memory of the World Program is a trust strategy. Strategy to transmit the collective memory of peoples of the world. That it it's, uh, wants to uh, get everybody in the world understand everybody else's uh, memories as well as yours. So it's, uh, it's a big strategy and I think it has succeeded in many ways through its uh, mechanism of nominations of your, your best dress, your best, the things you uh, care about or you are proud of, the documents that are iconic to you in each country. And um, I think in the past we had maybe 40 a year that been submitted to the registered subcommittee, but now there are over 100. Um, so as be it, it has attracted interest of people in the world. And many countries have participated and a few more are building up their own collection and selection, which is very helpful and meets the uh, the, the, the intentions of UNESCO. But uh, I think sometimes forget that uh, not only the documents, that is uh, the documents in, in whatever forms are not the only things that we should care about. We should um, also understand that uh, the archives and the libraries that are responsible for holding or keeping these documents are the main actors. Now, now there are maybe some 30 documents on the uh, register of, mem of MOCAP and that come from the ASEAN countries. So you have uh, documents in different forms. In fact, I counted there are something like 11 materials, kinds of, kind of materials. So you have the paper, which is Cambodia, for instance, Genocide Museum Archives, Archives of Dutch India Company from Indonesia, uh, Babat Dipo Nagero of, uh, of Java. This is the, the very uh, um, famous picture of the Tuzling Genocide Museum archive, which is uh, on the Cambodian register. Paper, in paper form, you have uh, Indonesia, Lakaliko, Correspondence of the late Sultan of Kedah, which we heard this morning, Ikiyat Hangtao, 
Serja Malayu, all these are in paper form. We also have presidential papers of Kherson, Philippines, Kitab Ilmu Bedil, which is a book on Malay traditional weaponry, and archival documents of King Chulalongkorn. This is the picture of the Malay annals. Now, papers, and then they come to palm leaf. The palm leaf that is uh, nominated and accepted is Dakara Katakama, which is a text that describes uh, Java and neighboring countries. You also have bamboo, which is the Philippine paragraphs. Um, and then you have plaster, porcelain, terracotta, which is a royal literature on way, royal architecture in way, which is a kind of inscriptions. This is the Nakaratakama of Indonesia. This is the paragraphs of the Philippines. This, but this is, this is a copper plate also. Then we have the golden letter of the Burmese king, Long Piyar of King, which was happened to send to King George of Great Britain and kept in Germany. So uh, the three countries put together a uh, nomination for this. You have battle, the bell uh, in Myanmar, in Bagan, by King Bayanong. And then we have uh, many wood blocks, which comes from the Chinese uh, culture, wood blocks of Yen Yenestri, the Phu Kiek School of wood blocks of Vietnam, and the wood blocks of Vinh Yen Pagoda in, uh, in the province of uh, uh, Phu Kok. Stone, like uh, the stone of Tranganu, and the description of uh, Myanmar, Kusodo, which is the, the Stipritaka, Masedi, Quadringo, stone inscription in Pagan, and the epigraph archives of Wat Po in Thailand, the King Ram Gamang inscription, and the stone uh, records of the Luck and Lei and Mak dynasty. This is the stone records of the royal examination of Le and Mark dynasty in Hanoi. And then you have audiovisual of Indonesia, the uh, uh, Asian African Conference archives, and archives of uh, Timor Leste. You have film from Laos, the Dao Laksat uh, film collection and also a film archive collection of Kate Carey's Malay classics. This is the Lao uh, film collection, and this is uh, one of the classics. Uh, then you have music, with lots of music instruments from Joe Jose Mazeda collection, and then you have radio broadcast of the Philippine people powers, and the DMK, which is a, um, a recording of storytelling by Takrut, which is a, who is an artist in Cambodia. So there are something like 12 types of material carriers that require different types of expertise for conservation. So the guardians of these items are required to look after them properly. So this is the task of the archives and the libraries to look after different types of material as far as they can. Um, and also make available for interpretation so that uh, people can read. Uh, these documents, of course, can be, if they are digitized, they can be read over and over again easily. As historians know, you don't read documents just for once or twice, but you can go back to look at them again and again to understand it more. 
now, but uh, the digital preservation that we are encouraged to undertake, although it's useful for access and adding another dimension to the documentary heritage, it will also add another challenge to all institutions in the arts and region. This is in terms of, of course, uh, financial resources. And as we know, the governments of this area are too occupied with economic affairs to take care of heritage, which continues to disappear through the neglect. This is in Asia and Southeast Asia. So, uh, That all? That's not. <laughs> Where are all my pictures? No? No. Um, now, if you talk about strategy. This is, these are the artifacts that you have a strategy to keep and look after. Um, remember the whole strategy that tries to promote digital archives are not, uh, may not be, or may be detrimental to the efforts to preserve now, preservation doesn't mean only the uh, keeping of the archives, but also they have to be, well, because they're usually in language, you know, in, in written in the local language, and they have to be studied and maybe the, the language have to be taught. So it's there are other undertakings to be followed, that is by, uh, through education, through uh, dissemination, and making known uh, the importance and also the meaning of the archives. Now I have, I don't know what happened to, the, to my slides. I have slides that I want to show how in Southeast Asia, at least in Thailand, the attention has been paid. In fact, I was also involved in projects that uh, try to go through the Buddhist monasteries. We did that in Northern Thailand, and there's another university that's doing it in, in uh, Northeast. Um, they are very, very rare documents that are not in archives, that are not in libraries, but are in monasteries because they were produced by the monks over the centuries. They can date back to 500 years. And they're kept or not kept, but you know, put away haphazardly for over the centuries. And it needs uh, effort to do this, to go and make inventory uh, and, and see what the titles are. And there are over 100,000 titles that we found in all these temples in northern Thailand and northeastern Thailand. And these, these collections uh, are very much revered by the local people. Because this is one thing that we forget, that documents are just not pieces of written, you know, something to write on. But by themselves, they, are, they have more or less a, a sort of a holy or sacred 
power, and you don't just throw it around. So uh, this is one, one thing we sometimes forget about the materials, that they are not to be taken as objects or just uh, for utility purposes. So, uh, and I, I'm sorry I don't have the pictures to show, uh, but when you go and collect uh, and try to preserve them, the communities will come out and help. So it's a collective effort, and people will be participating in this quite willingly. So it's one of the things that uh, you know, drive people to collections and for the institutions to make use of this energy to disseminate information and uh, promote education. I think um, in, uh, in Thailand or in Laos, in Cambodia, and uh, also uh, uh, Vietnam to a lesser extent, there are, the documents are from of different languages. So even in Thailand, we have documents that are written in Khmer. So this is how we get to know the ethnicity of the communities and the variety of people and to respect them. And most important of all, these documents I'm referring to are Buddhist that contain the Buddhist Buddha's teaching. And Buddhism is a culture of peace. Peace and living with nature. So it's something that uh, in Thailand at least, we try to you know, get across that people realize that uh, um, we have precious philosophies and testaments of the what happened in the past and people try to try to uh, present uh, Buddhist temples also contain local stories local histories you know chronicles and also um, medicinal books books with medical knowledge, and all kinds of things. So I think uh, in Southeast Asia we should be aware and do not neglect the value of these uh, documents in local areas. Now what do we, and then we should try to digitize in the past, what we've done is to um, microfilm them. There's always a choice, you know, microfilm or digitize. But in those days, I'm referring to activities that we did 30 years ago, that when we microfilm them, and now they've been digitized. But the originals, can also be kept, should also be kept. So we have uh, choices, you know. And digital documents to me, it's like a fish swimming in the ocean. How can you capture them? You could have certain technique to do it. You know? And you have to, um, deal with digital born documents to have any value. Of course, there are things like Wikipedia that may be valuable, but even so, you know, there are so many other things. And I think uh, if we pay attention to these digital beings, 
uh, it could just distract the young people from the so-called analog documents. So I think uh, we should be careful about promoting digital documents and at the same time trying to promote uh, analog, so-called analog documents and encourage them to be studied through the languages that are in them. So, uh, well, I don't have an uh, ex example to show, but uh, um, the document should also be used you know, collectively for education, and especially in heritage, a local uh, documents should be encouraged. I don't know whether there are many in in the under the Islamic uh, culture or not, but it seems that in Thailand, in southern Thailand, there are also books you know, that are related to. Uh, Islamic uh, knowledge. Now all of these cannot uh, progress. Local documents need ASEAN support. And it's about time that ASEAN step in to support document heritage of the region because we are uh, as I know, as I said, now the importance of document heritage is, uh, should be realized. And instead of concentrating on just economics, you know, uh, ASEAN should also have uh, space for the development of heritage, not only uh, but ASEAN doesn't do it anyway with uh, document with uh, dual heritage. But with document heritage, I think it still can be done. And I hope that uh, ASEAN will take note of this and you know, pay more attention to the uh, what what is shared heritage, our culture in the region. Thank you very much. Thank you.